Oh boy, do I remember this game. Fucker got himself stuck at the bottom of the goddamn ocean. I will say one thing though. That music is ballin' as shit. The controls are so floaty though, it feels like I'm skating along. How is he so fucking light? He can ride on bubbles, but he can't float to the fucking surface. You know, I just noticed something. He he kinda looks like Bartman. He's like a fucking Bartman clone. And I swear to god, the difficulty on this game is just fucking frustrating sometimes. Jesus fuck farts. You don't know how many times I have started had to start over from the very beginning. Like seriously, you think this game is easy, but it's not. Like I said, the controls are really floaty and you never know where bubbles are going to pop up from. You have a lack of oxygen. There's just so many factors. It's almost like, you know, panic mode. Fucking do it. Fucking do it. Now, after all these years, I still haven't been able to get past level 2, and I don't know why. Level 1, I can get past sometimes. Sometimes I have great days, sometimes I can't. But level 2 is by far the biggest shit stabber I've ever had in a video game since. Level 2 is such a shit stabber. I don't understand why it's so hard. You wouldn't think it is. Hey, let's just jump into a fucking coconut. You might not be able to tell, but you would probably have an easier time sipping frozen horse shit through a drinking straw than you get anything done on this fucking level. I mean, it is aggravating as hell. I've had about as much luck beating this level as the Detroit Lions have won a Super Bowl. At this point, it's like, should I even continue? Sure, why not? It's not like I wanted to do anything today. Linus is about as useful as Peggy Hill. Look, even the background looks like a third grade MS Paint failure. Codemasters was probably like, hey, how can we completely piss off the gamer? How about unavoidable crabs? Yeah, that's just great. Let me skate to my death like some Brian Boitano abortion. Fuck this shit. What's next? Let's play some Boomerang Kid! Boomerang Kid is probably what you'd get if Kevin James had sex with an Outback Steakhouse. Everything tastes like spoiled crap, and it's not funny. Which way did I go, George? Boomerang Kid, who was more than likely raised by Russian loyalists, has ankles made of glass, causing every fall over three feet to be debilitating and either causing sudden and erratic hip dysplasia or the sweet release of death. It was once believed that Boomerang Kid was once a badass, able to punch kangaroos in the face with his dick and the ability to ingest snakes and sharks alike as if borrowing from the power of Grayskull. But then Codemasters was all like, LOL, let's make him harmless. Like a mosquito. Yeah, 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 come on. I, ugh, fucking useless. Ugh, I really want to throw this game away, but then I'm just afraid that it's going to come back to me. Two down, two to go. Now, I distinctly remember Treasure Island Dizzy from my childhood, as it was one of the better ones on the cartridge. But it had the same kind of difficulty curve as if... You didn't know what the hell you were doing. There was a lot of meaningless walking around, and that really blew. You see, we didn't have the luxury of the internet back in those days. It was all trial and error. If you fucked up, it was your fault. Treasure Island Dizzy was the closest that Codemasters could get to an actual Zelda quest, because it felt like you were picking something up to take it here, and then you got something to take it there, and then so on and so forth. It was really just a, 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 a quest of grabbing things and taking them to get other things, and that may sound monotonous and boring, but again, this was probably one of the better games 
on Quattro Adventure, which amazes me to this day because you are a smiling egg. You know what, let me just stop you there. It, it, you're an egg. An egg. And bringing the difficulty thing into again, it is a one-hit kill. You can get hit by cages, you can get hit by anything but those bees. I don't know why those bees don't kill you, it, it doesn't make any sense. In fact, one of the bees make you moonwalk, so that's fun. At this point, I'm just walking around like a fucking idiot. I have absolutely no remembrance of this game whatsoever. I just remember picking things up and putting them down in other places. It, again, trial and error. It, that's all this game is. So, boring to some, maybe? I don't know, it was fun to me. I was, you know, seven. Screw you. Maybe I really did hate this game. I mean, maybe the music was the only thing that I really liked about it. And I'm not really sure why. The music is just a, a random assortment of cacophonous bullshit that just keeps looping over and over again until you go insane. Honestly, there's no redeeming quality in this game at all. Again, let me go back to the part where, you know, you're a fucking egg. That doesn't even make sense. I guess while I'm being informational, there were other Quattro games out there. There was Quattro Action, there was Quattro Adventure, there was Quattro Arcade, there was Quattro Sports, and I think there might have been a fifth one, but I'm not quite sure. And on Quattro Arcade, there was actually another Dizzy game um, that wasn't really good at all, but I remember it being uh, sort of puzzly. I don't know, it was different. But this one stuck in my mind most of all because it was half fetch quest, half jump around like a fucking retard until you go insane from the music bullshit. I don't know, it was fun. And then maybe fun is an objective word. I mean, again, the difficulty fluctuates between, oh, this is incredibly easy and this is incredibly stupid because an egg should be able to go into water without dying because you need some kind of fucking rubber snorkel. Okay, first of all, that doesn't make sense. That you are li living, breathing, sending an egg that needs a snorkel to breathe underwater, and I'm just getting ahead of myself. You know what, we should probably stop there and go to the final game, which is probably my favorite of all. I decided to save the best for last. Super Robin Hood is by far the best one on this cartridge. And before I go into this whole thing, yes, that is quite possibly the cutest Robin Hood I've ever seen. And I am completely okay with saying that. Um, that being said, this one, as I've said in the other three games, is probably the hardest. Uh, there's so much shit going on, whether it be the arrows or those things looks like used up tissues, there's bats, there's little Goombas with some kind of weird helmet on. There is everything in this game and they are out to kill Robin Hood. It is extraordinary. Besides the music, I think what made this thing so good was the fact that it's completely inaccurate to the, uh, the Robin Hood canon. I mean, not only does this make absolute no sense that Robin Hood's just running around in some kind of castle? Uh, like, what the fuck is that? It's like some mustachioed midget with a nipple on his head. None of this has made sense since minute one. But as a kid, albeit hard, this was probably the most fun I had in a 20 to 30 minute time period. And graphically and aesthetically, this is probably the best looking one. Even though there's only a couple of different locations like the dungeon and the castle walls and even outside. And they kind of, you know, change colors every now and then. It's probably one of the best looking of the four. I mean, Linus was, you know, <laughs> Treasure Island Dizzy was colorful. And, you know, Boomerang Kid was kind of... Outbacky? I don't know. Is there a word for that? Um, 
a Super Robin Hood is probably by far uh, the the most aesthetically pleasing to the eye. And that's not really saying much for an 8-bit game, I understand, but, uh... Come on! It's cute Robin Hood! Ugh, screw what I liked as a child. This game is fucking horrible.